Hello again, basketball fans, and welcome to this edition of Hardwood Classics on NBA TV. I'm Rick Kamla. Squaring off in the 1983 NBA Finals were the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers were looking to repeat as NBA champions, while the 76ers, with an NBA best 65 and 17 regular season record, were looking to win their first NBA title since 1967. The 76ers, up three games to nothing, look to close out the Lakers at the form. Let's check it out. We're underway in a moment for game number four of our best of seven with the 76ers trying to become the fourth team to win the championship in four straight games. And we'll have a jump between Ivoroni and Cooper. Michael Cooper, who has come off the bench, when Magic Johnson was hurt two years ago, Cooper was prominent in a starting role, but basically he has come off the bench as primarily a defensive performer. Philadelphia ball. Philadelphia ball. Norm Nixon with a strained tendon in his left knee. Of all the ailments he has, that's the one that has really put him on the shelf. He has a dislocated shoulder. Andrew Tony hits from the baseline and also a cut which he suffered in game number three. Magic Johnson, who has been bottled up by Philadelphia. Cooper loops it in, Rambis wasn't there, and the turnover gives it to Philadelphia. If the 76ers win, they will establish with a 12-1 rock the best playoff percentage ever in the NBA. That for a near perfect day. Can't do much better than that. Their one loss to the Milwaukee Bucks after they had moved in front 3-0 against that team in the Eastern semifinals. Andrew Toney tipped out by Magic Johnson to Cooper. Cooper is quick. Rambis throws it away. So the Lakers are off to a shady start in this game. Well, it's not a real bad start out. I was worried about them the last game because they started so strong. They, they seem to be at the, the right emotional level to start this game because everybody's a little nervous to start a game, especially a game that's important. Cooper is going to be guarding Maurice Cheeks. Magic Johnson on the doctor and Malone. Rambis the rebound. This is, will be the hardest game for the Sixers to play this year. Basket counts and a foul. One of the few times we've been able to see Magic Johnson go practically the length of the floor with one of his forays. And the reason this game would be so difficult is how do you play it? You want to win it. You don't have to, but you want to. And you want to very badly. And so how do you play it? Do you, uh, how much patience do you exhibit? When do you start to worry? The personal foul was on Andrew Tony, and the Lakers lead 3-2. to two. The trapping defense by the Lakers. Malone. Doubled by Rambis and Kareem. Ivoroni has seven seconds on the shot clock. They have 24 seconds to try a shot. And here come the Lakers. Magic finds Wilkes, who loses it out of bounds. Philadelphia ball. Pat Riley, who is fined $3,000 by the league for his remarks in the officiating in game number two. Malone. Can't do it. Naivaroni gets the offensive rebound and he's fouled. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, the headlines, as Brent and Kevin talked about, could this be his last game in Los Angeles? And all I want to know is what would the Lakers do without a center like Kareem? They might have a couple of problems. <laughs> a couple of large problems. You know that, that uh, thing about Pat Riley being fined $3,000. I wonder if uh, in his remarks, did he tell any lies? Foul was on Kareem and Ivoroni. Lakers have turned the ball over three times. They missed them both. Lakers are the defending world champions. Philadelphia has been to the finals four times in the last seven years and have come up empty until now. Off of Rambis and a fourth turnover by Philadelphia and we've completed just two minutes of this game. By the Lakers, Lakers have turned it over four times. James Worthy, the fine rookie, out with a broken leg. McAdoo is hurt. Nixon is hurt. Julius. 
offensive rebound. And that's what he does best. Irving is on Jamal Wilkes, and he has done a super job on Wilkes defensively in this series. From the corner, Irving over Wilkes gets the rebound, and the lead pass intercepted by Cooper. Magic all the way. And Moses Malone has it slapped away, and a loose ball foul will be called against the Lakers. Good help about Magic Johnson. It's obvious to me that these Lakers are ready to play this game. Nobody wants to be swept. <laughs> Ever. In anything. Personal was on Magic. Two team fouls against the Lakers. Magic is on Julia Serving. Five seconds on the shot clock. Ivoroni way off balance. But has it again in the corner and a new clock. Andrew Tony working against Wilkes. Traveling ball against Andrew. Andrew Tony back on defense and Jamal Wilkes beats the Sixers down the court and the basket is good. And a foul as well. The Lakers haven't seen enough of this kind of play in this series to suit them, Bill. Well, I think that one of the things that, that uh Here's a pass from Magic. He gets the ball, and he always looking up court. And there's Jamal Wilkes free, because if you're free, Magic can get the ball to you. I think one of the reasons that Jamal has not been as effective in this is that he's been playing defensive guard. And to run the offense from there is very difficult. It's a real drastic change. And he's guarding Andrew Tony, an explosive scorer, who has scored very well, although nothing like the way we have seen him in the past, he once scored 46 against this Laker team. Maurice Cheeks from the baseline. Maurice Cheeks, the point guard, has set the tempo and one of the top scorers for Philadelphia. And Kareem comes back with his first basket decisively. Our fifth tie of the game right here. Broken seven to six. And it goes back to eight to seven. We have had six lead changes, and Philadelphia, as the tempo speeds up, still has the ball. This has been the most wide open game so far that these two teams have played so far, and they're both playing good defense, but they're both running and getting that ball up and down court. You saw Billy Cunningham, the Philadelphia coach, who was weary and tired, but proud of his ball club, and talking to him before the game, he did not act as if his team had a 3-0 lead. I guess when you're a coach, you always worry. You have to. And you know what's really funny? You, you see a guy age, years, winning. And because this is a tough profession. Now he's got his ball club. They won, only lost one game, and they're still nervous. We've had six lead changes, and the Lakers will try to make it seven right here. Michael Cooper has it knocked away, and Rambis with a fake on Malone gets Malone in the air and gives the Lakers the lead once more. Back and forth we go. We have seven and a half minutes remaining in the first period. Cooper, Cheeks gets away. Now Michael is all over Julius serving. Rambis went right at Malone. And we'll have a Laker foul as Clement Johnson comes into the ball game for Philadelphia. He is the backup center and power forward who returned in game three after missing a game with a urinary tract infe infection. And Mark Ivoroni, the free agent rookie from Virginia, goes to the bench. Foul is on Rampus as he really went at him alone his first personal foul. by Tony and Julia Irving and lead change number eight in this first period. Nearly five minutes gone by. Nick Stockton and Bill Russell from the form in Inglewood. Rambis finds the room and Malone blocks the shot. Philadelphia ball. When the defense breaks down, it is nice to have a guy can block the shot. Now here's Julius High gets that alley-oop shot. He's working, he's working magic. Now, let's see, he's got there. Now he's got him. And that's what you call playing without the ball. Six. Philadelphia leading Los Angeles 10 to 9, 6.55 to go in the first period. Now, here's what I mean by wide open game. Maddox, this is something that he's not been able to do very much in the series so far, is run that ball up 
and get those kind of shots off for their team. They shoot a very high percentage when he can run the ball up, but Philadelphia has challenged him on, in most cases, so they've slowed down, slowed the Laker offense down. So. Shooting story, the lead has changed hands in each of the last eight baskets in this game. Right now, Philadelphia has the ball and the lead. Maurice Cheeks to Andrew Tony. Julius Irving wants the ball inside against Magic. Doubled with Cooper, and Magic knocks the ball away. Picked up by Tony. Two seconds on the shot clock, and now they're going to say that they had to reset the 24-second clock, which they did not, and there were two seconds left when Tony picked up the ball, and Earl Strom noticed they did not reset the 24-second clock. So now we have a new clock, and Clement Johnson will inbound for Philadelphia. Sixers trying to become the second team in a decade to win a title with the best record, and Julius Irving seems like a man possessed off the early start. He has four points. This is the biggest lead of the game for either side, three points, but the Sixers foul. And Andrew Toney is hit with his second personal foul. Now here's that play by Julius. If he had tried to shoot that instead of dunking it, Kareem might have blocked it. Clint Richardson has come in the game. He has been a defensive force coming off the bench in this series. Oh. Kareem inside against Malone. That's normally where Malone gets the ball against Kareem, and there's nothing that anyone can do about that. But one thing about Malone, you know he's not going to get tired, and he'll be there the last quarter doing the same thing. Clement Johnson finds an opening. And the former Florida A&M performer. Now here's that pressure on, on uh, Magic Johnson coming to bring the ball up. Clint Richardson put the in full court. Magic gets it inside. Oh, Three red shirts around, and it was Clement Johnson, Malone, and Julius Irving. A whole group of them. Malone blocked the shot, and goaltending will be called, and Julius Irving will get credit for the basket. Now Magic wants to know why his wasn't goaltending. Because <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Those two plays weren't even close. So the Sixers have opened up a five-point lead. Jamal Wilkes. Jamal Wilkes was hitting 53% during the season. He's 46% during the series. Magic Johnson's shooting is down. And Norm Nixon, who's hurt, also has been down. Malone gets his own rebound. And gets the foul. No, it's offense against Moses, who slams the ball down in disgust. So Moses Malone picks up his first personal foul. And Bobby Jones comes into the ball game for Philadelphia. Julius Serving goes out. Philadelphia had off to an early lead in rebounding. In all of the three games, the Lakers have led at the half and also had the rebounding edge on Philadelphia. That, of course, until the second half. Another good defensive play. Now, that was Moses' quickness on that. That was a, a pretty good pass. Clint Richardson throws up a wild air ball, and it's L.A. possession. But obviously, uh, they misjudged his speed. Our quickness because uh, he's much quicker than most people think because of his size. Under five minutes to go, first period. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell here at the Forum in Los Angeles. Three games to none. The Sixers lead the Lakers. Jones is all over Jamal Wilkes. And fine defense by Bobby Jones. Clement Johnson with the rebound. Cheeks has Rambis on him. They, they think it's a mismatch because Mo, uh, Magic, Magic is on Malone. Guard Malone. He takes advantage of it. They found him. That's one thing the Lakers haven't done is taken advantage of an open man when they've had a man free inside. Philadelphia has, as they did there. Sixers have run off six straight points and lead by seven. And that's broken with Kareem's mini skyhook. Crowd is still arriving, but most of the seats, practically all of the seats, are filled right now. Cheeks against Cooper. Offensive foul. That was a good call because uh, Michael Cooper was retreating. See, if you give ground and that's contact, although you are moving. Mike McGee, who you can see has played sparingly in the playoffs and did not play all that much during the regular season, has come into the game replacing Jamal Wilkes. So Pat Riley, forced to go deep to his bench, brings in Mike McGee, who was the number one draft pick last year out of Michigan. Clement Johnson blocks Julius Irving's attempt. McGee was a prolific scorer at the University of Michigan, and at the time he joined the Lakers was the top all-time Big Ten scorer. But he has been somewhat of a disappointment here. 
Kareem with another hook. His second in a row, and the Lakers come within three. Four for four for Kareem. He has eight points in the game. This has turned out to be a quite a defensive game, although it's wide open. It's still real good defense, especially on the full court game. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Clement Johnson working against Kareem. It's another one. So we're seeing Clement Johnson's offense here. He already has four points, more than he's averaged in this series. In the Kareem, low. Kareem's getting it in good position. Malone knocked it away into Clint Richardson's hand. Malone against Magic. And it's Los Angeles ball with 3.01 remaining in the first quarter. Johnson with Clint Richardson. Gambling his cheeks. Good pass to Randall. Magic with a fine assist. Now Magic is forcing that ball up under pressure. And this is keeping the Lakers in the ball game. Is that they're uh, fighting to keep control of the tempo. And the Sixers have called a timeout. Billy Cunningham wants to wrap it up. Kareem and Moses, the two dominant centers. Now, there's something you see is a sky hook, but you don't see how, most of the time, how a guy gets it. Now, he has a fight and fight. Now, there's a, a, a tempted layup and got it blocked. But the key to is the offensive position. And Moses has three blocked shots so far. We're live at the Forum in Inglewood on CBS, the home of the NBA World Championship, where the Sixers lead three games to none over the Lakers in the World Championship Series. And a fine ovation during the timeout for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the Lakers' leading scorer in the playoffs and the series. He has just passed Will Chamberlain to move into fourth place on the all-time NBA playoff scoring chart. That's a lot of points. And he's second to Will in the all-time NBA scoring. Landsberger has come in, number 54, for the Lakers, so they will have... Landsberger and Michael Cooper up front with Magic Johnson and Mike McGee in the backcourt with Kareem. Philadelphia has out-rebounded the Lakers 12 to 4, including 4 0 off the offensive board. Lemon Johnson has had a hot hand so far. This is that time. Julius Irving keeps it alive to Bobby Jones. Now the Lakers have, can match the Sixers in quickness, but in picking up that quickness, they've lost a, a little edge in rebound. Tip by Kareem into the hands of Magic. Clint Richardson on defense. Mike McGee guarded by Maurice Cheeks. And a foul called against Philadelphia. It'll be the 14th foul against the Sixers. Moses Malone on the bench for the first time in the game with four points. Julius Irving commits his second personal foul in the game. So Tony and Irving each have two fouls. And Mark Ivoroni quickly checks back in, replacing Julius. As I said earlier, uh, Dick, this is a very difficult game for the Sixers to play because you, you're halfway between. You know you you know you you should win it, but you got to be careful how you do it. Kareem hit. He was surrounded by red Philadelphia jerseys and will go to the line. That's the 15th foul against the 76ers and Mark Ivoroni, his first personal. So Kareem will go to the line. He's doing everything he can and before game three, Pat Riley said, I need at least 10 rebounds from Kareem who had four in each of the first two games and Kareem responded with 15 rebounds to do what Riley wanted him to do. So you can't really fall Kareem. He just happens to be going up against the super center in Malone. Tony Beck. Well, you know that the 76ers are the number one rebounding team in the NBA this year. And so they're going to, in most games, out-rebound the other team, no matter how much of an effort you put in. Because Moses is not the only one on that team to get rebound. 20 to 19, Philadelphia leading under two minutes to go first period. Mike McGee is guarding Andrew Tony. Loses his footing. Landsberger's on Ivoroni, and Clint Richardson gets by Michael Cooper inside. Biggest lead, Philadelphia, was five points. But hovering around the three-point mark. Almost a great pass. Good idea by Kareem. Minute and a half. Lakers have three team fouls. They have one foul that they can waste before they get into the penalty. Andrew Tony. Johnson crashes the offensive boards, but Magic Johnson comes around. 
looking for some opening. Bobby Jones. Ow. And Magic goes in and draws the foul. Jones was all over Magic Johnson, and finally he says, the heck with this. I'm just going to go to the hoop. Well, that's when it, it, yeah, the game unfolds. You'll see more and more things that Magic can do because these great players, a lot of things they do are very subtle. Are the things that they're capable of, you don't see very often, so you don't know that they're capable of them. But he's, he can go to the basket, he can make the outside shot, besides being a great passer. Personal foul was on Ivoroni, his second. Magic has four points. He has been stymied till this game by the Sixers' defense. He's the Lakers' top rebounder, but he has not had 10 assists or 10 rebounds in any one game. Well, that's one of the guys that the, the Lakers, uh, that the Sixers key their defense on in that he controls the tempo, and so they've been really attacking him to try to get control of the tempo. Ivoroni and the Sixers passed well in that segment. They're a great passing team, too. That's one of the things that, that makes them so good. Not only they're quick, but they can all pass. And they really execute their plays well. Mike McGee hesitant to shoot. Cooper. Ivoroni. Bobby Jones had beaten everyone down court, but Ivoroni thought better of it. Tony has it with 33 seconds to go in the first period. Yeah. Throws it away. The Lakers are playing pretty good defense because they have a very quick team out there now. 22 on the shot clock. Bobby Jones on Cooper. Clint Richardson picks up Magic. And another foul on Philadelphia. And the Lakers will go to the line. Now, I think what they're going to have to do, oh, Mike McGee is, gonna have to, is a great shooter. He's going to have to shoot. Yes, and he's out there, and he's so nervous. That's the last thing in the world he's thinking about is shooting the ball. He just want to get it, get rid of it so he doesn't hurt anything, you know. But he's got to go ahead and assert himself and take those open shots. What does Pat Riley want to get from Mike McGee? Well, he wants him to, while he's out there, play good defense and hold the fort. Don't make a lot of turnovers. Don't get burned too bad defensively. And if you've got an open shot, put it in. One point lead for Philadelphia. And the Sixers playing for the last shot of the period. Kareem has 12 points, far and away the leading scorer of this period. Julius has six of the seven men who have scored. Wild shot. Five seconds to go. Cooper looks up at the clock and pulls up for the shot. A three-pointer. We got a long way to go in this game. One period is history, but the Lakers have taken the lead on this three-point shot by Michael Cooper. That's a good way to end the quarter. We start the second period. Mike McGee in a second year from Michigan, number 40, along with Magic Johnson, Michael Cooper at forward with Mark Landsberger and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kevin mentioned the rebounding story still favors Philadelphia. Magic. McGee. And a two great opportunities for the Lakers. They come up north. Sixers with a chance to tie. McGee is on Tony, who's playing with two fouls. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Bobby Jones with a screen from Malone. And a great shot, a running left-hander. Bobby Jones, other than Moses, may be the key performer in this series for Philadelphia, coming off the bench and doing everything. And I think Moses may have a lot to do with that. McGee hits his first outside shot, and that's going to do a whale of good for his confidence. Now, because he can really cause problems. I he makes that shot because he's a great shooter. Tony working against Cooper. What a move by Andrew Tony. Went around one of the better defensive players in the league as if he were just standing there. And he used the basket time. as a screen on the shot so that Kareem couldn't get to it to try to block it. Missed his last five shots before he hit that basket. You did the Lakers a lead. They haven't had more than a two-point lead in this game. Philly was up by five in the first period, and Bobby Jones hits his second in a row. So we have another tie. Game four, best of seven. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell. Lakers trail the Sixers three games to none. Philadelphia looking for a sweep to go home to a big parade in the Quaker City. 
Kareem Skyhook, and he has 14 points now. He is the leading scorer in this series for the Lakers, has hit six of his first seven shots from the field. Kareem is on Ivoroni. This is the turnaround. McGee gives it up to Magic. Two in a row for Magic Johnson. And Julius Irving is going to come back in the game. He has two fouls, and he'll be coming back in. And a foul is on Mike McGee of the Lakers. There's the doctor who's looking for that first NBA championship ring. But Andrew Toney put a move on one of the better defensive players, Michael Cooper. There he goes right to the hoop. Now watch. There's Kareem. He'll give him a fake and then use the basket to, to screen Kareem away from the shot. The Philadelphia 76ers can get into the record books with a victory tonight. Give them the best playoff record of all time. To no one's surprise, Kareem, 71 Milwaukee team and last year's Laker club also right up there. And Kareem is off to a sizzling start the 36 year old veteran 14 years in the league from UCLA and he'll be part of a penetrating inside look Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at halftime of this game four you know you guys talk say he's 36 like he's ancient 36 is not very old well he had to go up against artist Gilmore in six grueling games and now Moses Malone if he were 24 he'd feel old now right <laughs> okay <Dick. laughs> All right. But you're right. 36 isn't old. I mean, you're only 38. You're young as anything. Here's Cheeks on a feed from Ivoroni. is fouled inside. Good pass by Mark Ivoroni. Set up that foul situation. That is the second team foul on the Lakers and the second on Mike McGee. Now, see, on that defense, on that pass, the weak side, the guys away from the ball should have. Now, here comes the pass right down the middle. Now, McGee just reacted a little too late. If he'd reacted a step, a half a step sooner, he would have been there in time to pick that pass off. Maurice Cheeks, who has averaged nearly 14 points against the Lakers and six assists a game, he already has five assists. And he's the key man on their defense. You see, they have a lot of blocked shots. But when the guys get in there close to the basket, they run out of momentum. That's why the Sixers can, can block shots a lot. Magic Johnson. Ivoroni had it and lost it. McGee picks up the loose ball, and Mike McGee with his second basket of the game. And the second year guard from Michigan forced to play with Norm Nixon out and not playing on the bench. And I'll tell you one thing McGee is playing good defense on Andrew Tony. But I'm going to tell you the way he's playing, he'll be tired for a week <laughs> after one quarter, I'm telling you, because having a country on a guy like Andrew Tony will just wear you out. Into the game for the Lakers is Dwight Jones, who is a midseason acquisition from the Chicago Bulls. He is a 6'10 center, and he's guarding Moses Malone. Ivoroni throws it away. Lakers by four. The biggest lead. Lead changed hands nine times. In the first period, Ivoroni knocks it away. It's still Laker ball. No matter what combination they have out there, the Sixers are playing good team defense. Keep in mind, they've been behind till the second half in all the games so far. Malone gets the rebound, and if you look at Moses' stats in the first half, they're not impressive. But look at him when the game's over. Tony, Cheeks. Maurice Cheeks, one of the best shooters for Philadelphia in the series and in the playoffs. And the Laker lead has been cut to two. 8.20 remaining in the first half. We're at the form in Inglewood. Wilkes from Magic Johnson. Now that's what they have to do is get the movement inside. And Magic is doing one good thing for the, for the Lakers. He's forcing that ball up quickly, even under pressure and in a double team even. He has nine points and five assists so far in this game. And we'll have a Laker foul. It'll be their first team foul of the second period. It's on Dwight Jones. Now here's uh, Dwight and Moses. Little push there. Now what the fans saw was that second push, which and the referee usually sees it third yeah. or second push. You know, it, Dwight Jones and Moses Malone have worked out a lot together, and they said Dwight Jones has knows a lot of Moses' moves. Doesn't mean he can stop him, but he's more familiar with him. I tell you one thing, he paid to learn. 
<laughs> Mike McGee has his third personal foul. So McGee coming in with four points has three and goes out of the ball game, and he'll re be replaced by Michael Cooper. But McGee gets a hand. You know, Moses is a very difficult man to guard because, first of all, you got to keep him off the boards, and that requires contact. But he thrives on contact. So, in order to play him, you would have to use selective contact. You'd have to initiate it and, and get away from it, initiate it, get away from it, so that you can bother his rhythm. But if you keep in constant contact with him, you're, you're in for a long evening. It's in play, his head. Andrew Tony, shooting percentage is off, although his point production is not, averaging 21 against the Lakers in this series. And the reason for that thing is he's a scorer, not necessarily a shooter, although he's a great shooter. He's a scorer, and scorers will do that. They'll get their points. 7.43 to go in the first half. Lakers 38, Sixers 35. Dwight Jones was pushed before the shot. Great position and a great pass on that end. They had to foul and stop that low because Magic can really pinpoint his passes. Ivoroni's picked up his third personal foul, and Bobby Jones will check back in in a moment. There's Bobby. Magic Johnson gets position inside. So Johnson going to work offensively, something the Lakers will need with Nixon on the bench and McAdoo questionable, and Magic has 11. We don't know how this game's going to come out, of course, but you can see that the Magic is playing with the heart of a champion. He claimed, excuse me, Dick. He's playing the Harvard champion. He's the Harvard champion means to me is that you may beat us, but we won't lose. Turnover story. Lakers are playing that way. Magic particularly. And you expect that. Pat Riley said we want to oh! spoil a parade. Another Philadelphia foul. It'll be their second team foul. The Lakers already into the penalty. This is the best passing game the Lakers have had so far in the series. And if they can do that, that's what you have to do with the Sixers defense. You have to stretch it and you have to make precision passes. And if you can do that, you can beat it. But you have to keep doing it because they're going to be that defensive pressure will be there all night. Bobby Jones committed the foul. Magic Johnson has hit 19 of 20 from the free throw line in this series. You saw Kareem on the bench getting a breather now. He has 14 points. Moses Malone in the game and Dwight Jones behind him. And meanwhile, with Kareem on the bench and Dwight Jones watching Malone, they've opened up the biggest lead of the game of seven points. Under seven minutes to go in the first half. Julius misses the shot. The offensive rebound by Malone. The basket will count in a foul. So Malone scores and will go to the line. He has six now in the game. You know, he's such a great rebounder, and I've watched him. He goes for a rebound, as I've said earlier in one of the other games. He goes for a rebound like he's going for a pass. He knows where he's going. He gets position there. Times it perfect. Bill, what is Pat Riley, Laker coach? What's his approach to his team trailing three games to none in the championship? Well, first of all, if you have to tell them the importance of the game, you're in too much trouble to even bother. So he doesn't, that never brought up. He's got a smart team. What he had to tell them is the adjustments we're going to make and what we're trying to accomplish with these adjustments because that's important so that they know what they're trying to accomplish so that if there's a breakdown, they can recover and make it happen what they're trying to get. But he never would say to you guys, we're our backs against the wall or, or we're down three, that's what we're going to do because they know how important the game is. And if you had, like I said, if you have to tell them, forget it. This is the time for the Lakers to be careful. In the last two games, they had good leads midway through the second period, but the Sixers closed the gap and came on strong in the second half. So we're going to watch these last six minutes of the first half very closely as Malone brings the Sixers to them three points. That's that quickness I was telling you about that, that the people underestimate. Inside, double team on Dwight Jones. Landsberger's follow-up. Another block shot, but uh, there's... Lakers came up with it. Alley oop and Wilkes knocked it away, but Malone recovered. Landsberger gets the rebound. Coming out with it is Magic. Against Tony. Well, he knew where Moses was, that's for sure. Magic has 15. Kareem was on the bench and coming back soon has 14 points. Julius Irving 
is short with it. And Landsberger tears it away from Bobby Jones for his third rebound. And the crowd is up. Cheeks can't save it. Wilkes is fouled. 5.41 to go, and the Lakers are about as high as they've been. And that was some good downfield blocking on that last play. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kareem back in the ball game. Dwight Jones goes out, and Andrew Tony is out of the ball game, replaced by Clint Richardson. Now here's uh, Dwight Jones trying to keep keeping Moses off the boards right there. We're back you to live back. You can't just scream. You have to also jump for the ball. Wilkes backs it in. Jamal Wilkes, who's not had a chance to consistently do the things that he does to burn opponents, get free in the corner for his outside shot. Chicks has the shot blocked by Kareem. The Lakers by nine. Magic will go to the line and try to make it 11. And the crowd loves the Laker effort. Philadelphia wants a timeout. Maybe this man will start to get his motor running. Moses Malone, who has nine points and seven rebounds. Andrew Toney, who, along with Cheeks, leads Philadelphia scores with 11 points. The top scorer, of course, Kareem has 18 and Magic 17. And watching it all from the bench is the scrappy in game Norm Nixon, who is out for the ball game. Sixers jumped out to an 18-11 lead midway in the opening period. Kareem brought him back. The three-point shot by Cooper turned it around, and the Lakers put on the steam in the second. 65-51. And there's Magic. As Kevin Lockley pointed out, Magic is clicking with the outside shot. And now it's a 16-point lead, matching the biggest of the game for L.A. If he's going to make that shot, that's going to open that middle up so bad that uh, it'll be impossible. Inside the Malone. It was last knocked off by a Laker player. Magic Johnson uh, helping out like they, the, the Sixers and the Lakers both use a lot of helping out. In other words, whoever has the ball, there are two guys on him at all time. That means the other three, three guys have to zone the other four guys. So it's not really, that's, excuse me, that's why they're not a very good rebounding team is because they're not in position for man-on-man -man defense. Or is Cheeks baseline? So Cheeks comes back with a shot from the baseline. He has 13 points, the top scorer for Philadelphia. He has not been amongst the top three scorers in this series against the Lakers. Malone, Tony, and Irving have held those on. Double team, Kareem falls down, gets it out to Rambis. Malone clears it to Cheeks. Even when the Sixers have fallen behind, they have played with poise and patience. They know they have a lot of time to come back, and it's all predicated on defense. Cheeks drives in and draws the foul. He has just turned into a terrific all-round player from the quiet kid from Chicago who joined the Sixers out of West Texas State five years ago. He's still quiet. <laughs> I know if he ever said anything in the huddle, but Billy Cunningham would probably say, who said that? Because he hadn't heard his voice very much. But he's quite a, quite a player, offensive and defensively. Kareem with a second personal foul. And you will never see a team with more patience and confidence than the 76ers. 12 point lead. Tony picking up Johnson early. It was Tony and Clint Richardson that stopped Magic Johnson. Length of the court, four rays. So far in the first three games. Now the Lakers playing a half-court game, something that didn't execute well in the fourth period in game three, knocked away on a fine defensive play by Tony. So let's see if L.A. will be able to keep up their half-court offense. And the Sixers are on a defensive run right now. Five seconds on the shot clock. Rambis with a short one. Malone the rebound. And here comes Philadelphia. Tony breaking from the other side. And steps called. Double dribble actually against Maurice Cheeks. He, he saw Tony going in from the right, changed his mind at the last minute, but not before the violation. Well, what happened was the Laker defense got back in time to take away the play, and he's already committed to the play. Ivoroni on Rambus. Irving out to meet Wilkes. 
Rambis. And here comes Philly. Cheeks now goes to the doctor against Cooper. It's tipped. The basket is going to count. It was tipped. Goaltending called, and Julius Irving has his fourth basket of the ball game, and Philadelphia has run off six in a row here. This is that run I was telling you about that they had to make early, and they're making it early. Ten-point um, lead now. Rambis has it blocked, and Johnson's shot misses. And it is still going to be L.A. ball, and Philly, Philadelphia is making a very early third-period run. As we expected, because they know they had to. And the thing is that the Lakers are missing what seem to be easy shots, but they are not easy shots because the defense makes it more difficult. 16 to 2 run. Team four of the NBA World Championship. The Lakers are trying to fight back and get in the win column, trailing three games to none. They lead in the game 67 to 57, although Philadelphia is in the midst of a run. This is the third period shooting for L.A. Bill Kurt Rambis, who took only three shots in the first half, already is 0 for 4 in this first third period yeah, what the Philadelphia defense has done is, is uh, they've shut it down and so that, that's the only shot that's available Kareem that's a good shot to have available right. and so you, you take the guy that you think would be the least effective and make him to be the one to take the shots Kareem is seven for eight now and 20 points in the ball game Julia serving Finds Ivoroni. Good pass by Julius. Because he knows he's going to be double teamed, and when he's double teamed, he's a great passer. Now, in order to keep a run going, you have to score at least half the time down the court and stop the other guys at least one out of three. Three minutes gone by in this third period. Magic Johnson and Malone gets the rebound, and there's a loose ball foul against L.A. That's against Kareem, and that's now his third personal foul. So Kareem has three personal fouls in the ball game. Something to watch at this point. And that train's about four minutes ahead of schedule right now. <laughs> Ten-point lead. You know, anytime an audience hears about trains ahead of schedule, they want to know what you're talking about. And the guy's trying to keep up with Moses. Tony missed. And they're fatigued. And Moses finally got the rebound, and Andrew Tony hits from the corner, and it's an eight-point game. The Lakers, led by 14, stretched it to 16, and now it's an eight-point game. Jamal Wills is fouled going in. He was looking for the three-point roll on that, and he'll go to the line. And you may have noticed in the second half, there have been no easy shots for the Lakers. In fact, uh, the jump shot that Kareem Bank, the Kareem Bank shot was only a real good shot that they've had. Uh, and, fort. and they were expecting him to try the skyhook, and that's that was available. As you saw there, the Lakers have been outscored by 43 points in the second half by Philadelphia, and they've held the top shooting team in the NBA to only 41% shooting because of that defense. It's an eight-point lead for the Lakers. It was 16 just a short while ago. Now it's nine with 8.23 remaining. We're in the third period. I think that run is over now, and they'll just play even for a while, I think. And you talked about another run, which we'll discuss in a moment. Oh. Irving missed. Kareem clears. Michael Cooper has Tony right in front of him. Johnson goes straight oh. to the hoop and is fouled. Ivoroni. And Julia Serving were inside. I, Rambis goes out, and Landsberger comes in. Ivoroni has four personal fouls. He is in foul trouble. And Magic is on the line, shooting two. Mark Ivoroni, free agent rookie. In fact, could be the second straight free agent power forward who played in Europe to start for the NBA champion. Although Philadelphia leading three to nothing, trailing here. Magic is nine for nine at the free throw line in this game. LA by 11. Five seconds on the shot clock. Lakers held fast with defense 
as Cooper and Ivoroni collide with each other. And Ivoroni has his fifth personal foul. Well, they got his money's worth on that one. Five on Ivoroni, and he'll go out for Bobby Jones. He has started all but five games for the Philadelphia 76ers as a rookie, 26 year old rookie. Turnover gives it to Philadelphia. 7.31 on the clock, third period. Bobby Jones going in. Can he fly when he gets ahead of steam? Nine point game. The Sixers had it down to eight. Now, we just saw what the Sixers do when you make a mistake. Wilts wide open. No one covering it. Andrew Tony was hit in the jaw, and all of a sudden gets a little chummy out there. <laughs> Five minutes gone by, third period. Now the intensity is increasing in this game right now. This is getting to be a crunch time, as you call it. Early crunch time. Tony. Julius fighting for the loose ball. And here come the Lakers. And steps called against Magic Johnson. Traveling against Johnson. Turns the ball back to Philadelphia. Now, the good defensive play by Tony, what he did was he blindsided of Magic, but he had enough room still to make a turn. Now, there's when uh, Tony got his uh, comeuppance. And a few lumps. All right, Pat. Thank you. The starting front line for the Lakers of Kareem Wilkes. And Rambus have outscored Philadelphia's front line of Ivoroni, Irving, and Malone by 19 points. Bobby Jones fall away. Kareem gets the rebound. Out of bounds, it's still Laker ball. So as Bill accurately signaled an end to that Philadelphia run, it's an 11-point lead with less than six and a half remaining in the third period. How far behind can Philadelphia get now? Wilkes. Malone had it and lost it. And Wilkes comes in. Wilkes again. It's now 13, Bill. They cut it down to eight. They still have to make another run at the end of this period or the start of the fourth period. That's the, what I was talking about in the second run. Team fouls, three against Philly, two against the Lakers. Tony is clobbered by Jamal Wilkes. First personal on Wilkes, and the 13 foul against the Lakers. Billy Cunningham. Now, what the, what you do to make a run is you keep working working defensively until you find a rhythm or a defense that works, and then you emphasize that. And as I said about the Sixers, if they're going to make a run, it'll be keyed off of their defense because when they play good defense, they are a great shooting team also. Two free throws by Tony. Once again, it's 11. We haven't seen Mike McGee in this third period yet. Landsberger is up front with Wilkes, with Cooper and Johnson, the guards. Cheeks doubling off. He's the designated double teamer. Malone gets the rebound. He has 11 rebounds in the ball game now. And a chance to bring the 76ers to within nine points. And Bobby Jones does it from the side. What a terrific playoff he's having. Five for six in this game. He was 7 for 12, 6 for 11 in two other games shooting-wise. And that's only part of his asset. Cooper. Malone gets the rebound. Now they can make it 7 with 5-12 remaining. And Bobby Jones goes up. And they're going to call the blocking foul against the Lakers and not the charge against Bobby Jones. And Bobby Jones looks like he is hurt on the floor. It's against Cooper, but Jones is shaken up. Three on Cooper, but the concern is Bobby right now. Now here's the play. Murray Sheeks has the ball, he hands it. Pass, bounce pass to Bobby Jones, and there's the play right there. Now let's see where he lands. I think his head might have hit the floor. Here's another angle of the same play. Let's see how he lands. That's the thing there. There's where he hit his head on the floor. Philadelphia will take a timeout.
Now pass. Elgin Baylor and has now moved into third place in NBA playoff scoring. He has Jerry West and John Havlicek. West, the all-time scoring leader. Havlicek is second. Earlier, he surpassed Will Chamberlain. 20 points in the game. Philadelphia can continues consistent shooting. L.A. is down to 25 percent, reminiscent of their 19 that we saw in the second half. Last game, the Lakers shot two of 14 from the field in the third quarter. Right now, they're four for 16. And what the Sixers have done is they've fine-tuned their defense and decided who would do the shooting and keeping the key guys from getting their shots. This is as close as the Sixers have come, eight points. They had it earlier in the third. Now it's eight again with 452. And Cooper gets past Malone and scores. So it's a 10-point game again. You have no idea what a great play that was that Magic Johnson just made. If he were 6-6, he couldn't have made that play. Julius open as Bobby Jones. Jones continues to shoot. The lights out of the basket has 13 points on six for seven shooting. I guess the headache's not bothering him a whole lot. Kareem looking wow. inside. Hey. Finds magic. Good pass. So the Lakers are getting effective passes inside. Last time by Magic, this time by Kareem. It's a 10-point game once more. And that's the only way you can beat that Philadelphia defense is stretch it out and cut without the ball. Malone. Oh. L.A. ball. Malone yells foul. Gets no respect. And here come the Lakers right back with Cooper. Wilkes. And the Lakers... After struggling a bit this period, uh, doing the job off the offensive glass impressively. And, uh... Now here's that pass by Magic. The defensive man is playing him, doing a good job on him. Now he's going to make a great pass with all that defensive pressure right there and relieve some of the pressure on them because they were having a hard time getting, getting inside. Clint Richardson has replaced Andrew Tony. There's Clint. Now you'll see when Clint Richardson goes on defense, he will try to pressure Magic Johnson in the full court so that they can take away. Uh, he's controlling the tempo of the game for the Lakers, and they want to slow it down a little bit. Cooper goes out, Mike McGee back in. He did a good job for in the first half. Don't forget, if the series moves to game five, we'll be there Thursday night at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And the Lakers would have to win and hold their lead for that to happen. It's 82 to 70, under four minutes to go in the third period. Dick Stockton, Bill Russell from an excited form in Inglewood. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Malone inside. A foul. Nine points so far for Moses Malone, who has averaged over 26. Landsberger fouled him inside. Now, what the Lakers have managed to accomplish is that the Sixers are using Malone as a safety valve. In other words, when the offense breaks down, then you give it to a guy that can get a shot off no matter what. And he's up to it. Malone has 10 points now and 12 rebounds in the ball game. Watch those numbers soar. Lakers by 10. Pressure by Philadelphia. Yeah, that's the pressure that Clint Richards does to try to slow down so that Magic is not so effective. Exactly. Wilkes to Kareem. Skyhook time. Loose ball. Malone just determined. And here comes Mo Cheeks. He's got Irving and Jones. He goes to the doctor. And the doctor is fouled inside. Now, so far in the matchup of the small forwards of Wilkes and Julius Irving in this series, the doctor has done a defensive job on Jamal Wilkes. But so far in this game, Wilkes has really broken out to 19 points in the ball game to eight for Julius Irving. But again, we must tell you that Julius can contribute in so many ways. Right. And he continues to do it. And sometimes there are people that only can equate his greatness with the number of points he has. That was six years ago. Four or five. Now they have McGee bring the ball up, and they'd rather have Magic bring it up now. What they're doing is they have McGee bring the ball up in front court so the Magic can kind of rest and then run the offense. Great 15 remaining in the third period. Bobby Jones blocks the shot. Wilkes comes back with it. Kareem left open. And we'll have a Philadelphia foul inside, and Billy Cunningham is all over. 
the officials. Team fouls. Lakers have five. They've been in the penalty, and the 76ers four. This has been a heated ball game practically from the very start. The 24 second clock for the second time was reset incorrectly. The first time they didn't set it. And this time they did. Cunningham with a great winning percentage in regular season in the playoffs led his team to 65 wins more than any other team in the NBA. One of the top records in the history of the league but Philadelphia has not won that championship like they haven't won a title since 1967. 305 remaining in the third period. This is the closest the Sixers have come eight points. They haven't been able to get under the eight point barrier. Mike McGee. Landsberger keeps it alive for L.A. Malone knocks it away to Cheeks. Fine defense by Moses. Again, they underestimated his quickness and, and how much territory he can cover in a short period of time. 240, third period. Malone, double, kicked out of bounds. Philadelphia ball. They have 11 seconds. Now, the Lakers are doing what the Sixers have been doing to them, pretty much. When their ball goes inside, everybody's in there. And try to say if you're going to beat us, you'll have to beat us from the outside and take an outside shot. Julius is fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot one in the penalty. Foul is on Jamal Wilkes, his third person. Now they're trying to get the ball into Kareem, and here's that pass I was telling you about with uh, Moses. Now he looks like he's out of position there, uses his right hand because he's on the left side. Good defensive play. Clement Johnson, number 45, there you see him, replaces Bobby Jones, who is, continues his fine play off the bench. He has scored 13 points. He has three rebounds and six for seven from the field. Now, what Billy Cunningham has done, he's going to bring Andrew Tony in because they need a balance with their outside shooting. When they took Bobby Jones out, now he puts Andrew Tony in to keep with that outside threat so that when the Lakers defense packs inside, they got someone that can burn him. The seven point deficit. Which is now six is the closest Philadelphia has come in the second half. Since the middle of the second period, actually. Biggest lead was 16 by the Lakers. It was 14 at the half. So Philadelphia has made up a big chunk. Here's Jamal Wilkes. And Clint Richardson gets the rebound. Trying to make it a four-point game. Tony going to the hoop. And a four-point game. And the LA is being challenged here in the waning moments of this third period. Of course, what the Sixers have done, as you see, Clint uh, here challenging Magic. Basket counts and a foul. Good play by Magic. But what they're doing, Clint Rich is not trying to take the ball by Magic. He, what he's trying to do is make him take time so the defense can set up. Now, here's the strategy is to make Magic have to protect the ball. That's a great play there. Hard to do anything about that play. Magic Johnson now with 26 points, and that three point play broke an eight point string by Philadelphia. And Bill, you talked about the two runs that they have made in this third period one early and one late. Moses Malone drives in. 85 to 80. Lakers with 142 to go in the third. Philadelphia leads 3 0 in games, trying to wrap it up in four straight. Lakers trying to stay alive and send it to a fifth game in Philadelphia on Thursday. Kareem. Great shot. The left handed sky hook. 22 for Abdul Jabbar. Magic has 26. Wilkes on the bench with 19, with Cooper replacing him. Illegal defense. defense. And we know that sign so well, don't we? Huh? We've seen it enough. <laughs> We know that signal for the illegal offense, and Pat Riley's saying where. That's a warning the first time that's called. The second time an illegal defense is called, it's a technical foul, and an illegal defense in pro basketball means that there's a player not guarding someone, basically playing an obvious zone defense. 
116 showing on the clock third period both teams in the penalty on fouls Lakers 87 76ers 80 Kareem to Cooper winding down to a minute to go in the third period a foul against the Lakers that sends Kareem into a rage. And it's nothing, that's why. Four fouls on Kareem, and now Dwight Jones is going to have to come back in. Now, here's the play. Now, a good acting job by Moses, because no one can push him that far. <laughs> why is it so easy to do out there and so tough to do inside, right? Closest. The Sixers have come four points. It's a seven-point game now, but Kareem is on the bench with four personal fouls. And Moses Malone is fouled going up. And that train is running about 10 minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Kareem is on the bench. He has scored 22 points. But what do they say about Moses Malone at a certain point in the ball game? He says, he says, I'm tired. But if I'm tired, the other guy must really be tired. Now I'm going to start to play. Well, see, now he... Mark Landsberg is doing a good job, but he's just wearing him out. And you see how that two or three minutes of pushing with him, he loves it. And he, as the game goes, it gets more and more effective. 40 seconds to go, third period. Five-point lead for the Lakers. They have 15 on the 24-second shot clock. In the Dwight Jones. Tips it up and in. Second try is a charm for Dwight Jones in his first basket. Philadelphia trying to get the last points here. 17 on the shot clock. There's a five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Malone, short shot doesn't make it. And here comes L.A. And here's Cooper. And Bobby Jones fouled him from behind, but he made sure Cooper wasn't going to get the basket and the foul, wasn't he? That's the kind of play you have to make, you have to try to make. As I said earlier, Julius is the only one I've seen to be able to pull that play off without fouling, although uh, Bobby Jones got awful close on that one. Now here comes the, the, the great pass from Magic right out front. And there comes Bobby Jones, never give up, right there. Jones is third foul, and Michael Cooper and Pat Riley has come on the bench come off the bench I should say to argue the call now what is he trying to tell us it's a 20 second timeout I would think he did not get an official call of a timeout but it appears to be a 20 second timeout and Pat Riley is with his team in midcourt and there was maybe no timeout at all they just come out there talking the guys filled out you Walked over there and said, let's talk it over on the bench. Yeah. Soon as we know, you'll know. There's Bobby Jones on the bench. No timeout was called. Bobby has 13 points on the bench with three fouls. And here is Michael Cooper. I think one of the key elements has been that Philadelphia is putting the pressure on the Lakers bringing the ball up to it. And that has been, a, that has helped as much as anything. Plus the fact that, uh, a couple of guys in the front line are getting worn out a little bit, are worn down. Michael Cooper had his knee cut with a coffee can tin when he was a youngster. Had 100 stitches. They said he may never walk again. And he runs as well as anyone. Seven seconds to go. Turnover to Magic Johnson. Chuckles it inside to Dwight Jones. And lands on the shot. on the bench with 22 points. Pat Riley would like to bring him back, but hopes he has a cushion when he does. Kirby makes no mistake on a feed from Andrew Tony. And a five-point game, 95 to 90. Philadelphia's closest was 82-78. So they're very much in this with a lot of time to go, believe me. We'll have a foul. Ivoroni, and if it is on Mark, it's a sixth, and he's out of the game. He's gone. And he had a couple of things to say to the referee about um, the smog alert they've had here in L.A. the last couple of days. 
Four points, three rebounds, and two block shots. And Billy Cunningham now has to play without the man who starts a power forward for him. That means Clemens Johnson has a bigger role for sure the rest of this game. Six fouls and you're out of the game, so we can look for Clemens Johnson. Or Bobby Jones. Yeah, well, Jones is going to go in there and team with Julius Irving, and that's a combination that's worked very well for him. Well, what uh, Billy Cunningham was trying to do was get as many minutes as he could out of Mark Alberoni. He put him out there, he knew he had five fouls. And every minute was a bonus. Jamal Wilkes guarded by Bobby Jones. McGee, look at the Philadelphia defense all over the Lakers with plenty of time on the shot clock, though. Dwight Jones, loose ball. Jamal Wilkes forced that one up. And McGee keeps the ball for Los Angeles. Clint Richardson is on Magic Johnson. Malone just waiting for someone to come inside. He's on Rampus. Bobby Jones on a steal. Two on one break. Clint Richardson and Bobby Jones. And now the Sixers are as close as they've been since the middle of the second period. And it's quieted considerably here at the Forum. And the dancing has stopped for the moment. Kareem has to come in. Pat Riley would have liked a bigger cushion, but he has no choice now. Yes, uh, the first half, the, the Lakers were managed to play quite fairly well without Kareem, but not the second half because Philadelphia's on a roll. They got their defenses going now. Dwight Jones is out. This is the closest the Sixers have been since 36 to 34. Kurt Rambis. And Malone gets a rebound. It could be a one-point game. Bobby Jones. The doctor. And Philadelphia is gaining a lot of momentum, not to mention confidence, which they seem to always have. And extreme patience. They never once were they. Richardson misses. Chance to bring it to one, and the Lakers, again. no matter what the, the Lakers lead, they never lost their poise. 820 remaining. We're in the fourth period of game four. Magic. McGee tips it in. Mike McGee not only is helping the Lakers in game four, he's helping himself for next year. Malone oh. comes out of nowhere for his first offensive rebound of the half and is fouled. Now, here's the kind of play that Bobby Jones has been making the whole series, the whole playoff. And pass, pass, way to run a two-man fast break. Just touches the ball. It's a touch pass for Bobby Jones for the most part. Well, what you want to do is get the, the one defensive man out of step so that he can't guard either one of you. He's just in the middle then. Magic committed the foul, his third, and Moses Malone. This is the second. 97-93 Lakers. Under eight minutes to go. Fourth period. L.A. must win to survive and stay alive. Kareem. Foul. Basketball foul. Foul is on Moses Malone. That's his third personal foul. Three on Moses. The 76ers have beaten the Lakers five straight times this year, twice in the regular season, and three more times here in the championship. Kareem has four personals, and Moses has three. Moses not in foul trouble. Seven-point lead for the Lakers. Cheeks. Second year man McGee guarding Mo. Malone. The crowd thought that Malone had fouled Abdul Jabbar. Just a thought. Crowds don't think. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they react. Wide open is McGee. Malone is fouled by Kurt Rambis. 
a loose ball foul. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Los Angeles here in this fourth period. And four on Kurt Rambis. Offensive rebounds this half. The Philadelphia 76ers make a living on offensive rebounds, but in this half, the Lakers have had the edge, even though Philadelphia has come back on the scoreboard. That shows you what statistics can do for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tony. Shuffles it to Doc. And Magic Johnson in control with Andrew Tony trying to get in his way. Bobby Jones with another steal, and it sounds like a broken record. Cheeks driving in. Malone. Another offensive rebound. Another one. Look at that. What do you do about that? Well, Kareem was never in a position to stop because he's reacting defensively, and he never once. Moses got that first shot off. It was all catch up, and no one ever caught him. Remember, we said Malone hadn't done that much statistically. He has 22 points, and he has. 19 rebounds, the most he has had in this series. The forum is rocking here in Inglewood, California. That's the story. 6.36 remaining in the fourth period. The Lakers trying to hold on, a lead by five. At one point, they had a 16-point lead. It was 14 before that at halftime. Lakers have had it narrowed to three. And Philadelphia obviously coming on, and Moses Malone has 22 points and 19 rebounds. And Kareem is the second high scorer for the Lakers with 25 points and six boards. The two great centers together there. Lakers, you saw them with a the great edge in offensive rebounding because they're only shooting 32%, so they've made up for it with their work off the offensive board. Here's the alley oop to Cooper. Doesn't work. Bobby Jones. And the Sixers trying to cut it to three. Cheeks does exactly that. And Philadelphia is making their fourth period run now. Johnson. Wilkes. Moses, his 20th rebound of the ball game. He led the league with an average of 15 during the year. Tony. And it could have been one. Now, a bad pass. Kareem overthrew Jamal Wilkes as he hangs his head. What a game this man has played. Marvelous. He's doing everything he can. I know he wish he had that pass back, though. Five forty. Now remaining. Rambis got a piece of the ball, and it's L.A. Good defense. The weak side helped out just in time. Then that's the only way you can stop that play. The guys away from the ball. Lakers have. Fought back the Sixers every time they've come close. And they're going to call Clement Johnson with the foul on Kareem. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Philadelphia. Here is Marcus Allen, the sensational running back for the Los Angeles Raiders. And he told us that his parents celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. Super guy from Southern Cal. They had been his first year in the NFL. Magic missed the layup inside. That was a difficult shot. Tony on a move. And a Laker foul, and that'll put him in the penalty. Uh, there's if it's a, a foul. No, that was no a foul. A person that, uh, whatever he was in taking, told him he could guard Moses. So he's going to go out there and help. You were talking about the crowd before, <laughs> I believe. Three point game, 197. Lakers lead by three. Winding down the five minutes to go, fourth period. Tony throws it up and draws the foul, and he got the two shot foul out of it. And that is the 15th foul on the Lakers. Magic Johnson has his fourth foul in the books now, and Tony will go to the line. Now, Billy Cunningham is bringing Julius Irving in for Bobby Jones. And now they. This is the time when the game is going to be decided. They've made their they've made their run, and now they're going to go down the stretch, trying to see if they can pull another run out of it. Tighten down the defenses and get good shots as much as possible. Whatever happens, the Lakers have made a sensational 
performance tonight out of this game using little used bench people because of the injuries to Norm Nixon and Bob McAdoo who haven't played in the game. People like Mike McGee and Dwight Jones have had to play a lot. It's a one point game, 100 to 99. The Lakers trying to salvage something. Tipped up and in by Kurt Rambis. And it's three again. Tony again against Wilkes. Moses Malone. Taps it to Tony. And it's one point again. And when Moses kept that ball alive. And now the train's on schedule again. Philadelphia 76ers making the run, trying to wrap it up in four straight. Trailing by a point. 4.15, showing on the clock. Kareem. And Malone snares the rebound with his reach, his 22nd rebound in the ball game. Four minutes to go. Wilkes. Punching at Tony, punching at the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. Tony lost it, and Wilkes gets it back. Hit from the Lakers. Cooper. And the Sixers want a timeout after that Cooper basket, but Wilkes got the measure of Andrew Tony on their one and one duel at the other end. Though. He was able to distract him to make him concentrate on beating him one on one, and he's able to steal the ball right there. Knocked it loose and he went for the ball. He finished off that defensive play. A defensive play isn't finished until you've got the ball. And here's the Cooper basket that puts the Lakers up by three with a timeout. Moses Malone is trying to make sure there's no game five as he has seven points and nine rebounds in this period. And his game totals are that great. 22 points, 22 rebounds. Now the question is, with the score 104 101 Lakers and 335 when Ellie goes on offense again will they go to Kareem which they did considerably the last time Malone knocked that away still Philadelphia ball they have 11 seconds to try a shot Magic has 26 Kareem 25 Wilkes 21 that's 72 of the 104 that the Lakers have by those three, Tony misses and Rambus gets the rebound. Malone thinks he was pushed. He was into the second row. 3.15 to go. Fourth period. Three-point lead. And they call a foul on L.A. and five on Kareem. Now, what, they, what Magic called for was Moses was up, went out of bounds on the last out rebound and said, beat him up, Cap, and try to get inside the shoot. So Kareem is playing now with five personal fouls, and he's got to play with five. Lakers have no other choice. 3-0-3, winding down to three minutes to go in the game. And a push by Wilkes. And Tony can try to bring the Sixers to it in one. For Jamal, that is his fourth foul. As far as the timeout story, the Sixers have two timeouts, plus their 20 remaining, and the Lakers have three full timeouts to go. Lemon Johnson is asked by Earl Strom to ask quietly move along to the lane. Ask? <laughs> I don't think it's all right, Dick. He asked him. All right, he said, get over here. <laughs> Tony has 22 points. And what Tony's doing is carrying the load for the, the, the Sixers offensively. And and a lot of teams, this would be a bad thing. But what he does to allow them is to concentrate on defense. He is 11 of 12 at the free throw line. So under three minutes to go. It's 104-103 Los Angeles. Lakers over the limit in the foul. Sixers have committed 14 fouls. Kareem. And it's three points again. At one time, the Lakers owned a 16-point advantage early in this third period. Philadelphia has come to within one on several occasions. Maurice Cheeks gets inside and is pushed, so he'll go to the line. So Philadelphia is drawing fouls at least. They're making the Lakers defense 
breakdown, especially on the weak side. That's the fifth personal foul on Michael Cooper, Russ. So with Bobby Jones, by the way, coming in, replacing Clement Johnson. Cooper has five, and Kareem has five. I would think that if this game were to move into overtime, that might be a disadvantage for the Lakers. They are undermanned as it is. Cheeks can come within two as he missed the first. Ivoroni had fouled out for Philadelphia. But the Lakers have two of their key men with five personal fouls. And now the Lakers call a timeout. They have two timeouts remaining. And with 2.24 remaining in the fourth, it's L.A. 106. We're getting a sizzler here in game four. Pat Riley trying to keep his wounded team alive in this championship. Force a game five. And we'll be there Thursday at 9 o'clock from Philadelphia if the Lakers win. They have 15 seconds on the 24-second shot clock, and the Sixers playing their usual tight team defense. Kareem, and it's knocked away by the doctor, and here he comes. A big play, and a tie. They've come all the way back from 16 points, under two minutes to play. Our fourth tie against the Philadelphia Trap, Rambis. The 33-year-old Julius Serving with a big play. And Magic Johnson goes in and is pushed inside. That's the 15th foul against the Sixers. And that's that team defense. But they're playing the passing lanes. And Julius is as good at that as anyone. He and Bobby Jones are particularly good at that playing the passing lanes. That's how he came up with that steal. Bobby Jones, four fouls. Magic Johnson. Ten. Of 10 from the free throw line, Marty Aronoff, our statistician, keeping track, and now Magic misses at the worst time, you'd have to say. 144 remaining, fourth period. And the Lakers are up by one. He has 27, does Magic. So does Kareem. They're the high scorers in the ball game. But now Philadelphia trying to take the lead with 135 now remaining. Bobby Jones. And this is the place they want to be. They think they can play with, can beat anyone going down the stretch. Julius gave up his dribble, guarded by Magic. Wilkes is all over Tony. Cheeks with one second, they don't get it off. The 24 second clock expires. Big defense by LA, Russ. And the Lakers have to score this time down. You've got to take advantage of that. When you can get a turnover like that, when they don't get a shot off, you've got to nail it down by scoring on it. One point lead for L.A. Cooper. In the Kareem. Double team. Sky hook. Sure. And Malone gets it out to Maurice Cheeks. 76ers looking to take the lead. And they will. And the man who may want it more than anyone else. In this forum, Julius Irving has made the steal and the big basket and on the feed has given Philadelphia 108-107 lead. And here's Billy Cunningham. He's putting in Clint Richardson. And the reason for that is after Julius either makes or misses the free throw, he wants Clint Richardson to put the pressure on Magic Johnson bringing that ball up court. And Julius Irving will try to complete a three-point play. This is the first lead that the 76ers have had since 24 to 23 in the first period and a timeout called for by the Lakers they have one timeout left Philadelphia leading by one if they hold it they're the world champions in four straight the timeout story Lakers have one left with 59 seconds to go and keep in mind that Kareem along with Magic Johnson and Michael Cooper have five personal fouls each Ivoroni fouled out earlier for Philadelphia and that's one of the things you know is Julius Irving, you know, he had, as we talked about earlier, he had, didn't have the numbers up there, but he has made a couple of key plays going down the stretch. And it's when you get them, right? It's like your block shots when you play with the Celtics. All right, the Lakers, if they needed a score last time down, Russ, I'm sure they need to do it now. 50 seconds. Magic. Bottled up. Cooper into Kareem. Got Malone and Cheeks on him. 
foul. And if it had gone in, it would have been a three-point possibility. Cheeks has some words for Earl Strom, who says, stop right there. For Maurice Cheeks, that is his third personal. Andrew Tony comes in for Clint Richardson. We know why he's in. Every time there's a timeout, it depends on who's on offense and who's on defense. It's a substitution that Billy Cunningham would make. The Lakers are 9 of 11 from the line this half. Philadelphia, 22 of 25. 42 seconds remaining. Pat Riley, who guided his team to a title last year over that man, Billy Cunningham. Maybe a reversal this time around. And Kareem, 8 for 10 from the line. And it's 109-108 Philadelphia with 40 seconds to go and 20 on the shot clock. Julius with 10 with Magic guarding him. Irving outside. Hits a big one. A big basket. And a 111-108 Philadelphia lead. And the Lakers call their last timeout. Michael Cooper will inbound. Sixers won that championship in 67 with Will Chamberlain, Chet Walker, Luke Jackson, Wally Jones, Al Greer. Three-point attempt by Cooper is short, but it's last touch by Tony. So with 19 seconds, the Lakers still have a shot. Now this game is far from over. Now Kevin Lockery's been in a lot of down-to-the-wire games where amazing things can happen. Into Kareem. Knocked away by Cheeks and a steal. Cheeks will use up the clock. No, Malone. And that may do it. And look at the Sixer bench. They and know it's it. that defense. So right again, that defense comes up with the big play. Magic Johnson misses a three-pointer. And the Philadelphia 76ers, Maurice Cheeks, quiet, knows they're going to be the one yeah. champions, folks. And Billy's done it, finally. At one second left on the clock. I don't think they're going to play that one second. Pat Riley and Billy Cunningham, Warriors, great coaches together. They're both great young coaches. They asked Julius Irving, would you rather win it at home? And he said no, because that would mean 72 hours more of wondering, and I've wondered long enough. Julius has his ring. Moses Malone did what Philadelphia wanted him to do. The champions of the NBA 1982-83. Four straight, only the fourth time in history. Golden State did it over Washington in 75, Milwaukee over Baltimore in 71, and the Celtics over Minneapolis back in 59. And now the Lakers. When I was a kid. Yes. Sixer dressing room. And the man who came alive with 24 points, 23 rebounds, and three block shots. Question as to whether Billy Cunningham will come back to coach, but that's not the main issue right now. All right. Right now, we're going to go down into the 76er dressing room to Brent Musburger. Brent, do you hear me? Doc, you're up. Con congratulations, Doc. How does it feel now? You've waited so long for that NBA championship. Well, seven years is a long time, but it was well worth the wait. Doc, take me through those last hectic minutes. You score the last seven points for him. The first field goal comes on the steal. I think it was just a matter of opportunities coming. There you go, Bill. Being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> they put so much concentration, I think, on Andrew and Moses, it just opened me up right at the end. Billy, did you think when you fell behind again that you could come back and that this team has done it all season, all year in the playoffs. The thing, we just we didn't come out the way we wanted to in the second half. We just came out and played the ball we we're capable of. Hey, Alfredo. Mo, oh, how you feel? Oh, I feel great, man. I had to go to the boys for a call. I feel great, man. Hello, hello, uh, Alfredo. And uh, Mr. Gill, Mr. Gill, my mother, Mary Malone, and my little boy. This is Mo. Talking, talking. Okay. Hey, Mom. Mom. Hey, Mama. 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 Hey,
And so, a dramatic end to a dominant series as the 76ers win game four, 115 to 108, and win their second NBA championship. The Sixers were led by 1983 NBA MVP and Finals MVP Moses Malone, whom they acquired right at the start of the season. Nice move. They were also led by all defensive first team performer Maurice Cheeks and 1983 All Star Game MVP Julius Irving. Thank you so much for watching this edition of NBA TV Hardwood.